Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. And our top story today, factors families should consider when getting their 2023 finances in good order. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Mary Morris is the Chief Executive Officer for Virginia 529. Mary, so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Well, thanks. It's always good to be with you, Jeff. All right. It is December. It's the uh, last month of the year. There, there's a lot that goes into December from the holidays to thinking about end of year. I know you've got five reasons why December is important from a financial perspective. Yep. You know, lots of good reasons. It's um, There's so much going on in December, but it's a good time to take stock uh, you know, before the first of the year. So to do that year-end tax planning, make sure that you've maximized all of your deductions, all of your contributions to things, contributions to education and retirement savings accounts and ABLE savings accounts made by the end of the year may qualify for tax deductions or credits. So you want to make sure you take advantage of that um, and you get a uh, a benefit to your families. Um, you want to maximize employer matches sometimes, whether that's gifting, um, you know, to, to charities that you care about, but also to your retirement savings. Um, at Virginia 529, we do a match for 529 accounts. And so if you um, make your contribution by the end of December, then you'll get your match for 2023. So you want to, again, take advantage, maximize, don't leave any money on the table. Um, you just have more compounding growth opportunities. The sooner you get started, the, the more likely you're going to be to to meet those financial goals. And it just sort of sets the tone for the new year and it gives you peace of mind for the new year as well. So you can start off, you know, that, that doesn't have to be your um, first New Year's resolution. You can take care of taking care of your financial uh, well-being in 2023. Get, get Take that out of the equation and then worry about getting into shape um, after the first of the year or something like that. Yeah. And, and Mary, just to kind of follow up on a couple of the themes, and I want to explore this throughout the show. Um, you know, we, we saw, for, you talk about contributions, whether to the retirement plan or to the 529 plan, we actually saw the Internal Revenue Service kind of bump those up a little bit for 2024. So it's really, you know, you want to maximize what you're getting in 2023, but it's also time to think about, did I get a, did I get a raise? Did I get, it, did right. I get a bonus? Should I think about allocating some of that money towards these uh, financial goals? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's why it is a good time of year. It's a, It can be an expensive time of year for people. You're thinking, oh, I'm buying gifts for people. I'm doing that type of thing. Um, but you want to make a gift to yourself as well. So, right, if you get that bonus, um, putting a little bit extra into your accounts. And of course, for, for 529 and ABLE accounts in particular, um, they're really nice gifts. So you can think about, okay, if I'm going to give a gift to family members, to my children, to my grandchildren, nieces and nephews, helping them if you know that they are planning or if you think maybe they should start planning and saving for education expenses or they have you know, a child with a disability or an adult with a disability and has an ABLE account, you know, helping others with those goals is um, a really great gifting opportunity. And most programs, most platforms have really nice gifting options now to make it easy for people to to give a gift of a 529 contribution or an ABLE contribution. I mean, it really it is such a powerful gift. We had one of your colleagues, uh, Vivian Sai from the College uh, Savings Foundation on recently talking about this as such an imp important gift. Mary, I love that you brought up... Um, compounding. And I just want to take a moment to talk a little bit about financial literacy because we're, you know, we're all at different levels of financial literacy and you're never going to know it all. But it's so important to understand that key concept of compounding and why if you're a younger person, and I say younger, you're 18, 19, 20, entering the workforce, if you start early now, that compounding over 20, 30, 40 years is really going to leave you with a powerful nest egg. It's true. It, it makes a huge difference. And that's why, again, we've been saying for years, just get started. And whether that's retirement savings, education savings, whatever it is, a little bit, the earlier you start, it's meaningful. It, it matters. It adds up over time. If you make recurring contributions, you know, so I, I think December is a good time to think about, okay, well, maybe I don't have um, a lot of discretionary income in December because I am doing all the holiday things, but I can set up my accounts for recurring contribution. 
um, particularly on those five to nine accounts. So I'm going to put a hundred dollars a month in, and it's going to come out of my checking account before I ever even see it. You know, I know the dates that my paycheck gets put in, and so I'm going to take a little bit of money and put that into my five to nine account and set it to start in January if you want. You, you know, I mean, just get it taken care of, and that way all year you're taking a little bit of that money. So if you know you've gotten a raise at the end of the year or some bonus money, take some of that, get it set up and have it come in. Retirement savings is huge. You know, one thing I'll throw out, it maybe doesn't fit quite into this, but for, for folks who have um, 529 accounts in particular, something that will take effect January 1. So to start thinking about, talk to your financial advisor in particular, if you have had a 529 account for at least 15 years already, you have some money, you think it's stuck in it, you, your child is through with college and there's a little bit of money left over, there is an opportunity now to um, to transfer money left in a 529 account into a Roth IRA for your beneficiary. And I think that's going to be a really terrific way to jumpstart savings for new grads, for, for you know, for, for some young people who are new to um, to the workforce who maybe don't start saving for retirement soon enough or with enough money, uh, this opportunity to roll money from a 529 account into a Roth IRA is going to be um, just a nice little boost uh, to the retirement savings for some young people. Yeah, I love how it brings it all together, Mary. It's not just I got to pick this benefit, that benefit, or this benefit. It really is brought together. Mary, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about year end financial planning. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AI. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Mary Morris. She's the Chief Executive Officer for Virginia 529. Mary, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. It's good to be with you. Uh, Mary, before we kind of get back to some tips for the end of the year, I want to ask you about RetirePath, which I think is, is, is in its infancy. It launched this year. Um, how are things going? Uh, and, 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 and give us a reminder of what that program is for people who I, I can't believe they haven't, but haven't maybe haven't tuned into this program before. Sure. Retire Path Virginia is, we were one of the, the most recent states to launch with a state facilitated auto IRA program. Uh, and so we launched in June and we are providing an opportunity for a large portion of the uh, almost 50% of Virginians who don't currently have a workplace retirement savings option they now have it with Retire Path Virginia, and um, it's going well. You know, we are just we're getting notices out. Uh, I think we sent some. We'll send something. I think early this month, and then we'll back off a little bit because again, we don't want it to get lost in the holiday mail. But we're actually coming up on uh, in February will be the deadline 
for the our, our wave of employers to uh, to sign up. And so we're starting to pick up the pace of letting them know what this is. It's a challenge to get the word out. So we're continuing to work on that. So an opportunity here, any place we have a chance. You know, we're talking to folks all over the Commonwealth to Rotary Clubs and Chambers of Commerce and any place where uh, businesses and employers work to let them know um, that we're there to help them, you know, to try to answer their questions. We've got some great webinars, information on, um, you know, on our website. But you know, the nice thing is that we have lots of people who had not been saving for retirement who've started this year. And so, you know, they're finishing up 2023 strong and this will continue on. And as you said, people who had never had anything except thinking that, oh, someday Social Security will be there for me now have their own retirement account and they're really starting to take charge of their finances and their financial um, you know, health in the future. So we're excited about it. And um, you know, the first part of 2024 will be really, uh, really exciting. We'll have better information, probably more information by, um, by mid-year next year. Yeah, and um, you know, I think from the employer perspective, offering a, this type of benefit, whether it's the IRA state facilitated program. It's so important, Mary, to attracting new employees to work. And, and look, we have a almost full employment in this country. I mean, it's like around under 5% unemployment, right. but it, you've got to be competitive. And, and so for a smaller employer, this is the way you can be competitive, offer healthcare, offer retirement benefits. Yeah, you know, we're finding the employers that we're working with, I think once they, they get through the path and they understand it, they realize that we are providing uh, a really nice benefit for their employees. They don't have the fiduciary responsibility, the hassles of deciding what to invest in, what program to offer. So they're able to make this available to their employees with, without a cost or an expense, uh, you know, in time or money from the employer. So it's a nice way to get started. But we're also seeing financial advisors are using it as an opportunity, which we think is great to talk to employers and say, you know, you could do more. You can offer your own plan and then you don't have to participate in the states. We don't really care. We think there are plenty of people who will participate in our program. It is intended and designed to be for those, you know, smaller employers, the ones who um, you know, just don't don't see their path through to offering it, but hope over time you know, that they will, um, they'll see the benefits and, and open up their own 401k and, and maybe have higher contribution limits and and um, do more. But it's a continuum and it's just a great opportunity. So we're, we could not be more excited about the program. Yeah, Mary, last question. Uh, beneficiaries, look, I was in the record keeping business for many, many years. And I can tell you this time of year, really get those be beneficiary designations in order. Did you get married? Did something, did you have a change in, in a life circumstance? It's really important whether it's your educational savings program or your retirement program, to make sure you have your bennies all designated. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's a, a lot of places do that now, and we do it. When you come onto a website, um, if you're making contributions or payments, it will send you to your profile page and say, you need to check. Um, once a year, you should absolutely do that. Take a look at your investments, you know, whatever it is. Again, your retirement investments, your 529 investments, is it the right mix? You know, do you want to think about making a change in your strategy? End of the year is a good time to do that. Um, you know, again, looking at the state, the tax benefits that are on on offer, and then, like you said, your beneficiary designations. Just make sure things like your um, email address is correct, your phone number is correct, right? If anything has changed, update it now because I guarantee you, what happens, and we see this a lot, you don't want to make those changes when you want to make a contribution or get a distribution from your account, because it will slow it down. I guarantee you, you want to do that in a planned way. And end of the year is just a great time to do it. Take some time for yourself, sit back, go into your accounts, make sure you've got the right investment mix, all your information is up to date, your beneficiaries are squared away. Um, and then while you're in there, make a contribution to finish off the year strong and then set it up to continue into 2024 and uh, you'll be in great shape for the new, yeah. for the new year. And we, then you can sit back and relax and enjoy the new year with a, a glass of champagne and friends and family and not have to worry about things. And you can look at your statement on 1231 and say, Oh, I did that. Mary, it's always right. great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And look, we're going to have you back in a few weeks to talk more about savings. So until then have a great rest of your day.
Great. Thanks so much. Good seeing you. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more and all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRN AM. We'll have a very special guest and another important topic. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.